Good morning, Egg. It's Tuesday. I got a little bit of the tiny chicken disease, hence the husky voice. So I really loved your snow goose migration video. I thought it was fresh and smart and really just lovely, but I can't help but notice that for the first time in like several years, you ended a video without saying, John, I'll see you on Tuesday. Actually, several nerd fighters noticed this, and by several, I mean these two people and myself. Anyway, leaving off the John, I'll see you on Tuesday was definitely the correct artistic decision, but it still felt weird to me, and it made me wonder why we have a sign off in the first place. Like, Zay Frank's The Show inspired most of the conventions of Vlogbrothers videos, right? Like the jump cuts, the good morning, etc. But Zay never had a consistent sign-off, so for a while I was like reveling in our originality and creativity, and then I remembered something from the hazy, distant past. I gotta go. Now, to the vast majority of you, that means I have to go, but in fact, I think it will mean something else to Hank. As an experiment, I'm gonna call him right now. I'm gonna call you back in about 20 seconds. I'm gonna play you a short audio clip, and I want you to uh, videotape yourself. Okay, hold on. And now, here's Ian! I'm one of those guys who went to school until I couldn't get any more degrees. Young people today can probably benefit from my 12 years in college, so here's some advice. Avoid any course called colonial American literature. You'll read smug creeps like Benjamin Franklin, psychotics like Edgar Allan Poe, half-smart mystics like Ralph Waldo Emerson, and turgid pulp writers like James Fenimore Cooper, all of them dull. What I'm hoping for is I'm hoping you will remember the three-word catchphrase of that guy. Is it, I gotta go? Yeah! It is I Gotta Go. I don't even know where that came from. Perfect. I'll talk to you later. It's deep. It's deep in my brain, John. All right, I gotta go. I gotta make I gotta make a video. So Ian Scholes was this public radio commentator, and when Hank and I were kids, our parents had his tape called I Gotta Go. How do I explain tapes to young people? They were kind of like Spotify, only not free, and it only came with 12 tracks on it, and it was literally made out of tape. It was very weird. Anyway, Hank, when I was like 14 and you were like 11, we listened to Ian Scholes constantly. And we loved him because he was funny, and he talked fast, and he was smart without seeming snobbish or inaccessible. And plus, he never got boring because his commentaries were never more than four minutes long, and they always ended with him saying, I gotta go. I mean, Hank, we listened to that tape hundreds of times. The fact that you remember I gotta go, even though it's been 20 years since you last heard Ian Scholes say those words, that says something. And we were clearly hugely influenced by Ian Scholes, not just because we have a sign-off, but because everything he was doing in 1985 is stuff that we're trying to do now. By the way, Hank, it turns out that Ian Scholes is a character created by a guy named Merle Kessler, who is still doing theater and radio work in Northern California, and who is still very funny. He's still working, and his work is still rippling outward, and for me at least, that's the definition of a successful creative life. In a recent episode of The Art Assignment, a viewer asked Sarah what her definition of art was, and she had this great answer about being comfortable not having a definition, and then I like blathered on for a while without saying anything. The thing is, we tend to imagine creative enterprises as like singular feats of genius, right? You know, James Joyce half-blind holed up in an apartment writing Ulysses, or Beyonce releasing a brilliant album without assistance or warning, but even if you're James Joyce or Beyonce, your network of influences is vast and it stretches back further than human memory. In the United States, it's almost a national obligation to praise individuals, but in truth, I don't think individuals really make stuff so much as they process their influences and try to build upon them in the hopes that they can make stuff that will be helpful to others. Contrary to the prevailing narrative, I don't think art is really a story of great individuals trying to make their mark upon the world. It's really lots of people working together across time and space trying to make the world suck less for ourselves and for each other. That's my definition of art, actually. You can find a link to a couple Ian Scholes commentaries in the Do We Do. Mr. Scholes, I'm a little bit embarrassed that I've been making videos deeply inspired by you for the last seven and a half years without knowing it, but belatedly, thank you. Hank, I gotta go. All right, Hank, while well, I have this husky voice, I'm just gonna try to sing Whitney Houston's uh, The Bodyguard song, ready? The, the, this is just the refrain. And I, I will always love you. Didn't get there.